Hi, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I set up my MacBook for development. Now, I've been using the M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch for the last few months, and I thought it would be nice to share, share with you how I would typically set up a new laptop. So, that's what we'll be doing in the course of this video. I already have like some go to applications that I always need to have in my laptop and I don't waste time to get them downloaded. An example for, for me is Chrome and I typically do what everybody does, use Safari to download Chrome. I'm going to walk you through the different things that I do to set up my laptop from setting up the terminal to setting up my coding environment to applications that I use for um, developer productivity. So to get started, I'm first going to create a new user on the MacBook. And this is because I already have done some of this process before, but I want to show you from the scratch, you know. Let's get started. First thing I'd like to do is clear my dock because I really don't like having so many applications stay there when I might end up not using them any day like for example this one so what i like to do is clear the dock out and leave just the application that i use so let's do that now this looks way better next i recently started loving just removing this and putting it somewhere else so i like to have it on the left or right side of my screen so we we'll go to dock um, preferences in the settings probably right let's try right yeah so this looks better and the next thing i like to do is to automatically hide it like when it's not being used so it can go off screen and come back on screen the first thing i like to install is homebrew homebrew is a package manager for your mac and you can use it for installing from Node.js to installing VS Code. You can use it to install and you know, manage several different packages. Right now, I'm going to install it by copying this command here and open my terminal. So that is installing Homebrew. And with this, we can always use the command brew to install other things like brew install node. If I have it, I'm just going to run brew version. And it still says I don't have it. Oh, actually, yeah, I keep missing this. The last time I had to do the setup, I missed it. I pro probably think that it should highlight this in a different color so it calls it out. So, yeah, the next step is to run these two commands to get homebrew in my path so i'll just do that so now if i use brew version yeah that should work the next thing would be to install like a very nice terminal now for terminal i like to use item 2 I already have that installed so I can show you what that looks so this is item and if your case you haven't installed it you can as well just download it directly or there's also like a brew command for installing item too but I already have it so yeah we won't be installing that directly and with item I don't just use it directly like right now if you check my item it still looks exactly like the terminal i just showed you like there is really no difference between both of them but i like to use something else called um a different kind of shell called zish right and i also pair that with something called oh my zsh i guess uh, i'm in between calling it zish and zsh but yeah i also use this thing called oh my zsh and it's basically a zsh configuration for including things like plugin teams and different um setup so you can set up your um, terminal to look pretty using this um, shell so we'll copy that command and 
add it here nice so i now have um all my zish installed now the good thing like i mentioned earlier is you have like this zshrc file where you can go to add teams plugins you can add so many different things and for me specifically i like adding you know i like to customize my terminal to make it look nice to work in and so i like adding different plugins like a plugin for git so i can write something like instead of saying git checkout i can do something like gco this is git checkout you know it, like i have plugins that create aliases for me that i don't have to always type the same thing over again i also have like an auto completion plugin instead of talking about it i'm just going to go ahead and show you so first off let's open this zshrc file Bing dot zshrc. So right where he it says this Robbie Russell, I'll just go there and change it to clean. Uh, yeah, I think saving this should automatically trigger the thing to work, right? But we'll find out and then closing the item and reopening it yup that worked so we have a new team i don't know if you noticed any difference but the thing here changed i'll show you this is all the teams option there are so many actually and if you go back to plugins there are also a lot of different plugins so i only just use the one that i know that i would typically use for day to day so this is actually the first time i'm using this app and it's something that i have low-key been looking for but when i found it from a different video talking about exactly how they set up their mac i thought oh it would be nice to try it out so it's called keycaster and basically it's a keystroke visualizer so it allows you to see in real time the keys that you type in your keyboard and this is mostly useful when you're making like videos but install it we use the brew package um copy that and in our terminal just going to paste it and of course give it permissions because yeah it requires me to have permissions so let's do that and let's see what do we need Display key caster icon, yes. This is the shortcut display scalp and display my screen, display all keystrokes. I don't know exactly what I'm setting up, but we'll see. So if I try typing here, oh, I see it's in my other screen, so I just have to bring it here. So the nice thing you get is exactly this, right? So if I say brew install node, this is so cool. I like it. So the next step is to make sure you have node installed. I currently do, I guess. I already have node installed. And something else I like to have already set up is to have a node package manager now a node package manager allows you to switch between different node versions and there are two different node package managers that i know i know about mvm and volta now volta is kind of new for me and i recently tried it out and i was like oh this is nice so that's why i'm going to be showing it to you in this video so i think i should already have it but if that's not the case yeah let's install it so and to install it you need to use this command so we're going to copy it and paste it there nice terminal let's run volta nice so we have volta installed now and with this we can easily switch from node version 17 to node 14 to node 13 and so on so that's very good that we have that installed I think the last step for now is to make my terminal look even better by customizing it, right? And for that, I found a website called Items 
colorschemes.com item 2 colorschemes.com on this website you have different color schemes to choose from and all you just need is to download the file and import it in your item 2 settings so i'm going to be using this one called adventure time i already downloaded it so we'll head back to item 2 and use the um, command command i and that will pop up this settings page then we'll go to colors and then here in color presets you can import it i already have it there but if you want to import you just click on import select the file you want to import so now i'm going to change it to the adventure time and with that we have an even prettier terminal thing i'd like to do though is let's see make the window a little bit transparent make it a little bit transparent like so uh i think because i'm using the dark mode in my mac os and that's why i still have the this part of the tab um looking dark i would probably like to change that to purple but yeah let's see if there's there's a way to do that otherwise it's fine foreground tab color this is what that thing would do No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Tab color is probably when you open a new tab. So, you know. Anyway, now that we have this set up, in order to make sure that we keep these settings, we have to go back to general and choose default, profile name default, and choose copy current settings to selected profile, and then choose replace. Now, with this, if I close my item um, window and reopen it, I still maintain the same thing that I had before but if you miss that step it will go back to the default theme which is the black background but yeah we have a very nice item terminal now great so let's get um, into the next step of the process moving into the applications that I used to help me stay productive in my day-to-day -day work I would like to share some of them the first one is this app called fig actually it's an extension it's called fig it works as an autocomplete um, extension for your terminal so you can download it for free and install it and what it does is on your terminal as you type it auto suggests you know it auto completes the things that you're typing like it gives you options right no that's something you probably think you would not need until you try it so the next one is notion if you watched a couple of my previous video you know that i'm a huge notion fan i swear by it it's what i used to track my life is what i used to track everything in my life so i always like to i like it to be accessible so i have it in my mobile app i have it in my tablet i have the app on my um, computer and i also like to log in directly on the browser so i can easily access it from everywhere notion is great if you're thinking about taking notes you know keeping track of the stuff the projects you're doing just documenting things notion is the go-to application for 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 you um, similar to notion this is also new for me and i recently started trying it out and i really like it is a different app called obsidian obsidian is a note taking app but it's even better than that right it's a knowledge base application where you can store everything literally everything so i use it for taking notes i use it for keeping track of things i'm still trying to get myself into obsidian and see exactly how i can make it work for me but there is a ton of things you can do like there are plugins it has plugins it has themes just think of it as vs code but for writers you know that's how i that's my easy explanation for obsidian yeah and last app i'd like to share is this app called setup uh, i'll link a video here where i talked about it in detail but it's basically like a, an application marketplace right you have to pay for it though like it comes with a paid subscription but the cool thing is 
by signing up you have like seven day free trial and after that you have to start paying for it but the cool thing is that you get access to applications that you would typically have paid for for example one app that i swear by is the clean my mac app now if i was paying for this separately i would have to like maintain several different subscriptions but by paying for only set app i have like different applications that i can download so it just makes sense to just pay for this and then i have access to this other application you know how when you're working on your laptop you tend to save your files in different places when i'm talking about files probably i should say git repositories like the um, code base you work on some people have theirs on the desktop some people have theirs like in the download folder right that's absolutely insane because you don't have everything in one place right but something that i learned is always create in your root always create a dedicated folder for everything code related always create a new directory called code right and here is where i put all the code base that i have to work on or work with so they are not just scattered in different folders so that brings us to the end of the video that's how i typically set up my new macbook pro as time goes on if i find that there are applications or setup that i need to add to my pre-existing setup then i'm going to do that add it over time so this is just like very bare first time getting into the laptop what you should have installed and the things you should you know have that are necessary for you to start working with so yeah thank you so much for watching this video if there are any applications that you probably use that are super productive for you that you'd like to recommend to me please leave them in the comment section below i'll be very happy to learn about those apps thank you for watching don't forget to give this video a thumbs up like and subscribe to my channel i'll see you all in my next video bye